Here. Uh, I didn't take a I didn't take a shower this morning. I didn't feel like it. But I woke up to some very good news. I woke up this morning to find out that Henry Kissinger is no longer on this planet. He died at one hundred years old. Uh, he, there are very few people in this world who can actually say they achieved their life's goal, and he's one of them. Henry Kissinger's life goal was to destroy Western civilization, and he achieved that perfectly. So he perfectly destroyed Western civilization, but not to the degree he wanted. He destroyed the West as a power, but he didn't destroy the Western spirit uh, because he didn't bargain on paganism, and paganism is keeping Europe alive. Now, and the Western, and the Western identity. So, I first heard about Kissinger when I was a little boy. Honest to God, he was on the world stage when I was a little boy. I remember in the Holy Spirit School in Ballymun, we had this psychotic teacher called uh, Clancy, absolute lunatic, who was calling him a great man. And a peacemaker and all this stuff. This guy Clancy, just to, this beautiful blue tit over there. This guy Clancy, just to digest, digress, digest. Uh, if he's still alive, please sue me, please, because we'll get this out on public record of what, what kind of animal you were. This guy Clancy was a school teacher and uh, he became headmaster of uh, Holy Spirit School in Ballymun. And he's probably still alive. He's, one of these, he's like Kissinger, he'd be one of these consulates forever. And uh, he was a vicious child abuser and terrorizer. And uh, he used to have a leather strap in his class and he used to batter the kids with him. And uh, one of the most horrific episodes of child abuse I've ever witnessed was done by him. There was a kid in my class, this is when we were about nine or 10, called Martin Keyes. And this kid had really bad asthma. And he used to wheeze like vocally, and uh, Clancy was on one of his, his, his psychotic terror episodes of the kids, and uh, he told us all to shut up or something after he admit after he dished out a few slaps of the letter, and uh, again, pl please, Clancy, sue me. I, I want to, we want to sell in court. We want we want the world to, on record, the public record, know what an animal you were. And uh, he's a, a fucking oafish rustic from County Kerry. And uh, not putting to carry people down. But he was like literally the one who came up to Ballymun with a chip on his shoulder against these like Jack Ian's types. But um, this kid Martin Key is wheezed and he accused him of of talking and laughing, giggling. And he goes, I didn't giggle, I didn't giggle, I swear I didn't giggle. And he took out the leather strap. And I always remember when he would hit with the leather strap, it was almost like in slow motion. He had this comb over with fucking brill cream in it, right? And it would flap like this when he was like, when the hand would be raised. He gave this kid, Martin King, a fucking battering with the leather strap. And the kid stood up crying and goes, I wasn't laughing, I'm going home, I'm going to report you to the police. And he goes, you sit down. Poor kid was terrorised. I can remember like lots of things like that. Kids urinating themselves when he was uh, in the class. Uh, he gave me a few whacks, but not too many, because I was kind of like good for us to blow the radar. But one of the first introductions of the NPC was when uh, Facebook first came along. And about 13 years ago, and I had a look on it, I, I migrated from MySpace and was having, MySpace was dying already by then. And I having a look at, um, MySpace was great by the way, onto Facebook and was, oh, this looks interesting, whatever. And, I, 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 and there was a page for the Ballymun Comprehensive, the secondary school. But one of the photographs in there was a couple, three Muppets who took Clancy out for a pint, their school teacher. And we took him out for a pint. And I was like, and I wrote in the comments, I cannot believe that you actually took that animal out, that child abusing animal out for a point. 
uh, and a fair few people thumbed up to my comment. And the asshole who was in the picture, that you know, a, a certain an Irish, Irish, a certain type of Irishman develops this look when they reach middle age. I always look for that. Well, as soon as they hit 40, 45 ish, they get that look on their face. And all three of them had that look with holding the points in their hand. And, and Clancy looked as vicious as ever in the photograph as an a very old man. And they uh, still had the same look with the fucking glasses, you know, the fucking uh, welfare fucking glasses and uh, Clark Kent gla glasses. And uh, I could see that fucking comb over fl flipping up. It's, it, I'm sure he was sexually turned on by hitting the kids. And, you know, as soon as that flap went up and he was able to strike a kid, he fucking ejaculated in his trousers. It'd be like, the, you know, be like those things, like they're, they're, they're both in synchronicity. The, 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 the fucking hair goes up and he fucking, he fucking ejaculates into his trousers. And, um, he we always liked the synchronization. It was like, the, you know, those, those soap dispensers, those liquid soap dispensers. When you push it down, it fucking ejaculates a bit of soap into your hand. It would be like that. That's what he would have been like. And, um, again, sue me. Sue me, Clancy. Please sue me. And, uh, we'll put this all on public record. And we'll bring numerous witnesses forward to show the world what you really were. Uh, and anyway, uh, or you can just fade away and die into the abyss where you belong. Dissipate into the abyss where you're going. But anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, I always remember those. And the, and the three fucking eaves in the photograph department. Like that. Oh, jeez. There there's, 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 anyone who grew up in Ireland and lives in Ireland knows that type. I said, yes, yeah, so now beating didn't do me any harm. There's a certain... There's a, actually, there's an... Ex, I don't know how I got from Henry Kissinger to this, but we'll, 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 we'll continue on. Uh, there, was, there was a certain type of archetype in Dublin when I was growing up of an asshole... That's the only way I could describe it. He was an asshole, right? And this archetype asshole would snarl like a little bit when he heard information he didn't hear before. What? And then he would look around like that. Like that. Are you particular? I, they're gone. They don't, they don't exist anymore. That asshole, that asshole archetype is kind of gone. But if these are kind of... This guy's snarl. So you'd be saying something like, uh, you know, and they're all stupid. They're all stupid, but they all they 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 they, they think by demeaning a person by going that you're some they're somehow superior. But those cunts have all gone anyway. Uh, so how did it anyway? Back to back to Henry Kissinger. Yes, there is meaning. With circular logic, there is meaning to this story. I remember Clancy, that teacher in school, is calling Kissinger a great man. So it takes a psychopath to know a psychopath, right? Uh, to recognize one of their own and to, you know, a psychopath will praise other psychopaths because they're trying to normalize that behavior where someone who's, who sees the psychopaths for what they are will try to alert people. And uh, Clancy, was, Clancy was admiring Kissinger because it was their kinship, they were, they were kinfolk two psychopaths now Kissinger story makes very little sense he, he was he was this kind of super Jew I'm not putting down Jewish people by the way but he was this kind of super Jew who came out of the the kind of the post six day war Israeli Arab conflict that where the Israelis gave the, the Arabs the, the beating of their fucking lives in 1967 or whenever it was and he ascended onto the world stage through the Nixon cabinet mainly as this kind of like foreign secretary diplomat type guy. Now he he was famous or made famous for create so called making peace with China. What he was really doing was he was handing America over to China. So all the Americans who had died and suffered through history to build up America and all the immigrants, he took it off them and gave it to China, which is where all why the industry is all in China now. And what did America get in return? A couple of fucking pandas. That's what they got. It was a Kissinger's, you know, trilateral agreement with China 
was the destruction of the United States coupled with a humiliation ritual. So, you know, we, 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 all, we so he gave, he gave the entire American machine to the Chinese for, for, for not for free and to rub the salt into the wounds the Chinese gave the Americans back a couple of fucking pandas that they tried to get them to fuck each other. That was the, I always remember that. A big part of my childhood is, is, is two pandas fucking. Will these two pandas fuck? You know, and it was like, uh, that, that was a huge part of my childhood. Like, there was always news reports like, uh, there's this, this, this fucking panda who, who's a man and there's this fucking panda who's a woman, and the cunt man won't fuck the woman, so we can make a baby panda. So the whole the whole fucking trajectory was getting two pandas to fuck. And I remember that was a big that was a big deal when I was a child, fucking pandas, you know, pa panda panda pro procreation, you know. Uh, we 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 but you know you have fucking up. I'm not. This is not. This is not bullshit. So they they had fucking names like ping pong and fucking hopscotch, and they'd be going like you know. Uh, it's possible that Hopscotch is pregnant, that Ping Pong got his lad out, and uh, he, 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 he gave her a good fucking rogering, and uh, she, she's preggers now with a baby panda, we don't know, and then they, they put fucking Hopscotch, or whatever the fucking cunt's name was, into a, a machine, uh, there's no baby panda, ah, fuck, you know, oh, bollocks, you know, uh, so you have people who are sitting at home going, you know, during the 1970s, oh, they turned off the lights again, Oh, fuck, I've no job. You know, I have to listen to that fucking Hovis commercial music again. The fucking kid pushing the bicycle up the hill. Uh, it's fucking freezing. Uh, I'm bored. Uh, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing to do. Uh, but, you know, maybe Hopscotch is pregnant. Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great if Hopscotch got pregnant? Hopscotch, if, 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 if fucking ping pong... Uh, Fucking knocked up hopscotch. All our problems will be solved. Uh, yeah, panda fucking was central to the seventies. You have to remember that. Panda fucking. No, so that's so. When I think of uh, when I think of Henry Kissinger, one of the things I think about, along with that Clancy asshole, is is, is pandas fucking. Ah, uh, that's they just I just uh, I, you know, panda trying to make panda. But anyway, so Kissinger was. Made that famous quote. <laughs> <coughs> Made that famous quote. Uh, Military men are dumb, stupid animals to be used in the the course of foreign policy. Well, that's true. You know that. I mean, I'm not degrading. You know, f fighting men and women do like do have a career in soldiering and whatever. Oh, lovely. But uh, yeah. That's true. Once you sign, once you sign up for the military, you're you're screwed. They, you know they own you like an animal. So that's he wasn't lying about that. He was telling the truth. But again, I'm not putting down people who serve. You know, but you have all these. I'm fighting for freedom. I'm fighting for my country. I I'm fighting for freedom. You know the Barry Dumont. Well, I Barry Dumont like I uh, Barry Dumont here. And uh, reporting from the the the. the the NPC zone in Nam. I'm in the 56th Battalion, uh, U.S. Army Corps, and uh, we are we are, we are deep deep in Charlie territory. You know those types, you know. But I, I I went over there thinking I was fighting for my country, but I was over there being a dumb stupid animal for Henry Kissinger. Uh, Henry Kissinger, I, I he he sent me over there. You know, and that like Kissinger is probably responsible for more deaths than anyone on this planet. I mean, it, it is ultimate killing machine was Cambodia, Kampuchea, you know, and uh, holiday in Cambodia by the dead Kennedys, one of the first American proper punk. I mean, I know punk was invented in America by like the likes of the New York Dolls and the MC5, but the first like punk rock. American hit I can recall as Holiday in Camp because I, mean, I know Sheena is a punk rocker and all that stuff you know Rockaway Beach and you know Blitzkrieg Bach by the Ramones is all fantastic but it, they it's almost like Americans pioneered punk rock they invented it through like you know the MC5 the New York Dolls and the Ramones and then it went over to England 
and then it inspired a new generation of punks in America. Well, that new generation of punks in America were kind of inspired by how the English, the British had taken up the ball was the, was the Dead Kennedys. And they had that song, Cali in Cambodia, but yeah, Kampuchea. Pol Pot, that was all, that was all, that was all Kissinger's doing. And, um, you know, so I always remember that. As, 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 that, that, that bastard has been around since I, that, you know, we don't talk about panda fucking anymore. Because they probably have artificial insemination for pandas now, or something. And, uh, we don't have your man anymore. Are you sure about that? That sneering, the sneering asshole. Are you sure about that? We don't have him anymore. And we don't have Western civilization as we knew it anymore because Kissinger destroyed it. Kissinger destroyed Western civilization. He killed the stone then. And uh, the last time I saw Kissinger on TV alive was when Barack Obama was installed as president of the United States by Illuminati, or whatever you want to call it. Actually, Obama's presidency was decided upon by the Trilateral Commission, which was Kissinger's thing. And he was going, he was Kissinger, uh, he has the, this is my Kissinger impression, right? Uh, this is, this man, Barack Obama, he is the best thing since pandas fucking. Because I like the panda fucking, and he goes, okay, and he will bring humanity together. You know, I went, I saw Obama in the flesh. I, I went to see him giving a speech at uh, College Green in Dublin in front of the old Irish Parliament building. Beautiful, incredible, Tatarian structure, you know. It's fucking Tatarian, it's fucking, if that cunt was still alive, sneering cunt, you're, are you sure it's not Tatarian? Yeah. That 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 asshole. Oh, speak. There was there was a guy on Iconic yesterday, David Ike's channel, decoding the all seeing the one one eye thing, with the greatest pile of bullshit. Another one of these troopers who thinks that it's ancient Egyptian words. Every language ever spoken was English, so it, it's all English language, you know. So I was just I was just I was, he was, he was the show he was coming out with yesterday, but and then all the, all, all the truth is going. Oh, the truth revealed finally. It's all come out. What? Anyway, uh, I'm all I'm all over. I met a woman from Ukraine this morning. She's a nice lady, and uh, she wasn't living here. She was living in Switzerland, working in Switzerland. I didn't ask her about Ukraine. That was probably, you see, the good thing about this is that, although he destroyed Western civilization and got his his dream come true, Kissinger had to l l die. With many things that they wanted that haven't happened, we still haven't got and will never have the cashless society. Uh, the climate change thing is people are laughing at it now. You know everybody, and uh, only ones that are not laughing are making money. Countries like Ireland are the, have recaptured their patriotism, uh, and uh, you know, and, and Trump ended up in president. Can you imagine how he was. I can't believe that the Trump is the president uh, of of my when he when when Kissinger said my country he meant that literally he owned the United States. Could you imagine all the young? I'm not making you know. I think going back to like the Vietnam War. Could you imagine all the young the families and the the young men that he sent off to their doom, just to cull the population, uh, just in order to keep America stable. I mean, when when there isn't evil, doesn't even describe Kissinger. There's another. There has to be another word for it. There has to be another word for it. He rep. He, he, he does, that doesn't even describe him. And uh, his life force has now gone. He'll be you know gone somewhere else and. Maybe back to the entity that was inside him. <clears throat> if you want to talk about someone who was possibly an alien being living on this planet, he'd be one of them. He'd definitely be one of them. You know, definitely see that. So, like, you look at the United States now. You know, when, when Kissinger got rose to power in the United States, right? It was, 
it was an incredible country and it just it was light years ahead of the rest of the world it was a it was just out there you know it's like it, it was you know firing rockets into space it was doing it was controlled it was the at the standard of living of the average american in the 1960s was absolutely stratospheric compared to like the standard of living even in like wealthy european countries the american dream was a real thing and then kissinger comes into power and what america is now you know blm burning cities down and being allowed to do it uh, a senile gimp as a president who can't bear doesn't even know his own name and uh uh, the country in, in incredible amounts of debt, its entire industrial base exported to China, and that was that was that was Kissinger. He did that. He 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 was a, he was a demon that destroyed America. He, you know, you can point to like you can say well, what destroyed what destroyed the British Empire, what destroyed the British Empire really. Uh, the the loss of their nation as a naval power that was really what did it. Once their navy, their navy was not the greatest navy in the world, and there was lots of other powerful navies. They kind of lost their edge, so that was the end of the British Empire. Uh, the end of the French Empire was uh, basically, go, you know, destroying the, the the Battle of Waterloo and Napoleon losing his power. That was the end of that. They they'd lost basically the god that had made the empire. The end of the the Roman Empire was Christianity. And what do all empires have in common when they fall apart? Uh, they become obsessed with celebrities, sexual degeneracy, paedophilia, and they develop new religions. Uh, the new religion that destroyed them, the West was climate change and the worship of, you know, or the, the, the fear of the carbon atom as a, as a, kind, of a, a, a kind of original sin, carbon dioxide molecule as an original sin. And that's what destroyed the West. So we, you know, we, we, I, I often wondered if he would ever die. And I'm actually surprised he's only a hundred because he was, you know, like I said, since I was a little boy, he was there. It, I remember he was voted the world's sexiest man at one point. Do you remember that? And I, I can remember when I was a kid, something like, uh, what's that magazine all the wagons read? Oh, Cosmopolitan. I think it was Cosmopolitan or one of them magazines. Which we know is all, you know, DARPA and called, that's why it's all men on the cover now, called Kissinger the sexiest man in the world, the most, world's most sexy man. And this is what, you know, the, the, this is, this is, this is what, this is the world that he created, the world that he lives in. So, there's, there's a candy bar in America called O. Henry, believe it or not. I don't know, I don't know what it's about, I'm sure it's. I always thought it was like, oh, Henry, Henry. Yeah. So Kissinger's gone. Meanwhile, here in Ireland, or oh, this is a this is a pot of tea one, isn't it? Meanwhile, here, and you can look at the, the gas cylinder behind me. They'll have psychiatric episodes going, he, he has gas. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. I'm not doing it. Right. It's a kind of a smile attached to it. Like, I mean, look at look 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 at so many photographs of Paddy's in their middle age. Anyway, gorm that gormless look. Um, where am I going with this? Yeah, here in Ireland. Well, in Ireland, it's falling apart big time. Uh, the the Irish the Irish regime, the uh, colonial attaché of Veradgar and Company thought that they would basically be able to punish collectively this nation and everyone in it for being the uppity mix and not playing the game they wanted them to play. Basically, allowing themselves to be stabbed to death by stabby Arabs, and and and, and accepting it. Uh, uh, you know, like what was the guy in London said? Violence is part of life in the Marsh City. Really now. And, 
what did it was you guys overseas you know people in Ireland lit the beacon and the you know and Gondor answered you guys are outside Ireland answered the sheer number of videos in the alt media talking about what's going on in Ireland in a way that the the Irish media doesn't and the and the colossal views they get shows just how when you take the small fish out of the the big fish out of a small pond and put it into a huge pond it becomes a you know becomes a very small fish indeed and that's what Varadkar and you know the rest of the, the diplomatic attaché of the World Economic Forum in Ireland are currently finding out and uh, so thank you for that people overseas for sending your support and to, uh, to help us fight here in Ireland we are great we graciously accept and thankful for you to do that now the thing is though you can see the sadism now they want to put you know the, the the Irish government hate the people and want to punish them all of them now e even the weak ones to get PCs here are even like they're kind of like backing off a bit now you know they, they got the they got the average middle class person here crying and screaming over trams and buses being burnt and not five year old kids being stabbed that was them that's the priority they made and they and it worked for a bit but it's not working now and uh yeah it's coming out now that you had a councillor in dublin said that anyone who protested should be shot in the head now they're all showing the true colors now you have now a situation where grip.ie has shown that this guy should have been deported years ago was on the police watch rolls and the police in Ireland are covering their ass right now but wanting to blame the far right because they basically let let him off the hook for 20 years as did everyone else the entire Irish machine of the NGOs the government the lot all the politicians all the parties he he is you know that the, the stabby Arab who they don't even tell us his name because he's clearly politically connected you see you're going to find this out more and more that many of these hotels and direct provision centers and not only in Ireland they will either be owned by politicians family members or by friends of the politicians who are getting who are creaming off the a, 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 you know a, a, a basically a fee you know they probably get later on when they retire they make them what they do is how, how the corruption works in Ireland is a politician will set will give his friend in the consultancy firm a big government contract for say building a metro in dublin they've no intention of ever building but there'll be millions upon millions or a children's hospital millions upon millions in consultancy fees paid to these out of the taxpayers and then when it all ends the politician is or his son is given a, a place on the board of directors of the company uh, you know it's basically a no-show job for a, a big salary that's how it works in Ireland. Another one is this direct provision centre. A lot of these hotels are owned by donors to the political parties or friends of politicians or family members or even in some cases probably politicians. I'm going to find that out soon. And they're getting their 50 grand a week. You know? You'll find that many of the anti-fash types in Ireland, the ones that are going, bash the fash, those types, many of them will have actual, will have ownership at some level or you know, financial involvement at some level in these these direct vision hotels and stuff like that and that's a, this is a business for them this this is this is an absolute business for them you know Der Derek Bly down in Cork is absolutely right when he says this is an industry this is an industry that that these people are running it has nothing to do with humanitarians or anything they're they're getting rich off it and they use the taxpayers money to it's just like Karl Marx said and I'm not a communist democracy was doomed because politicians would pay you would use the national treasury to buy votes and that's what's happening exactly here in Ireland it's Tammany Hall politics and so the, and the polit political parties are all under the assumption that what's going to happen is that the when these pot when these when these politi when these foreigners you know become Irish citizens that all vote for his for the party that let him stay let him or her stay in the country but they won't there'll be an there'll be an, an islamic gaelic party set up and that's who they'll vote for eventually so that's that's all nonsense too so uh, so kissinger could be everything i've said in this you see i i, I even think of the music i remember like when i first heard of kissinger radar love by golden earring was in the charts you know that i've been riding on that i got my hands on the wheel down there great song 
uh, and that was in the charts. I can remember that as a kid. And Sons of My Father by Chicory Tips. Sons of My Father. Da, 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 I remember the first synthesizer I I'd ever seen was somebody had made. I got a tone generator and he got two tones and it gave Sons of My Father. By turning the knob. And I'll do the intro to Sons of My Father. God, it's funny how the memories are flying back. And I even had a panda, a Fiat panda car, that was smashed in an accident. So, from pandas to pandemonium. I'll see you next time.